Welcome to this very first part of a new series of Python tutorials. Uh, there are quite a number of tutorials available. The difference is with this one is that it, uh, we use Anaconda by Continuum Analytics to do the work. It's a unified Python distribution that includes a whole bunch of goodies. What we're interested in besides all of the scientific packages is also the IPython notebook. And that's the other difference. We're going to use the IPython notebook as our development environment because I think this is probably the best way uh, for you to learn Python. Okay, we start by installing and I'm going to do Linux first. I'll, I'll probably put together a Windows version as well, but it should be more or less uh, the same. That's the whole idea behind, behind Anaconda. So you go to the website continuum.io slash downloads and then in my case I now have downloaded the Linux 64-bit installer. Obviously pick the correct installer for your platform. Okay, so let me just go to my downloads directory and under Linux I will now uh, just run bash on the installer that I downloaded. Uh, first it wants me to read uh, this license agreement and then type yes at the very end. And then it asks me if it can install that in the default directory, to which I also say enter, meaning yes. And then it takes a while to unpack everything from a 300 megabyte archive. So this includes Python, IPython, and a whole bunch of scientific packages such as uh, NumPy, SciPy, uh, Scikit's image, which is image processing extensions, uh, templating libraries I see here, even Erlang, which is a, um, a language for uh, parallel processing that's used by WhatsApp, for example, uh, Matplotlib, with which you can make high quality graphs and other plots, uh, and a whole bunch of other goodies. I've chosen, uh, also Qt, as you can see here, I've chosen to use Anaconda because uh, it works the same on all platforms, and also because it's very easy and by default installs in a separate an environment separate from your system python um, i'm doing this as a user for example so i'm not going to add the path to my default path you can i'm installing this as a, as a normal user and i have now an isolated directory and that contains all of my anaconda python goodies okay so uh, anaconda itself is a kind of a default virtual environment i have to activate that first meaning uh, that everything I run that has to do with Python will come from Anaconda and not from my system Python, which is what I want in this case. So I go source, in the Anaconda directory, I go source bin activate, and I have to specify the Anaconda directory itself because this will be the environment in which I'll work. Okay, then you can say it says prepending home uh, the whole Anaconda bin path to my system path. And if I now type which IPython, so I can see here the IPython will come from Anaconda, and so also, for example, Python itself. So IPython, you know, it's just a very nice uh, Python shell, but we're actually interested in starting a notebook. So let me just go IPython notebook. And what will then happen is that it will start up my browser um, with this notebook, uh, notebook interface over here. And this is what we're after. I think this is a really nice way to learn Python and you'll see, so, you'll see why uh, in hopefully a minute or two. So let me just create a notebook and I can re rename that and call it, uh, in this case, let's say uh, part one. And now what this notebook is, it consists of um, cells that you can make. So for example, in this case, let's do our little hello world. That's uh, valid Python. In this case, Python 2.7. Uh, in Python 3, I would just use uh, parentheses around that hello world. Okay, let's go uh, control enter, that will execute the cell and show me the output. Right, the nice thing about this notebook is that I can now go back and I can change my mind. Whoop. I'm typing blind here and I have new code and I can save this notebook by pressing Control S and when I come back tomorrow, I can just open up this notebook and continue. Uh, I can also make a new cell to go play in, for example, cell, and then um, I usually use the hotkeys in this case. Insert cell below. So I have a new cell to play with. I can always go back to the previous cell. I can make new cells, insert cell above. 
Um, and I can even change the type of the cell. In this case, for example, it may change it to a markdown cell. You know, all know markdown. This is a mark. So this is very nice. Um, if you also want to document your experiments, you can add little bits of markdown in there. So the IPython notebook can do much more than that. I can also insert image, link to images on the web. I can even input or insert YouTube videos, whatever you want. And I obviously, when I save this notebook and I come back later, my, I can find my whole notebook again. Let's just see how that works. So I'm going to close this down. And then uh, back in the console or in the terminal, I have to press Control C to shut down the, net, the notebook server. So let's see what happens. Happened over there. You can see the part one dot ipynb. That's the notebook. Let's start up the ipython notebook again tomorrow. It's the day after. There's my notebook. I click on part one, and I've got all my work back, and I can continue playing like this. Okay, just uh, to whet your appetite for the next lesson, I'll show you what the function looks like. Um, There we go. So if I press control enter now, which means to evaluate the cell, nothing will happen. It's just defining that function, but I can invoke the function like that and press control enter again. And what that's doing now is that it's invoking that function, which is, well, one could call it a kind of a macro or, or a kind of a stored collection of instructions. It's passing it the parameter Python person, which inside of the function is now uh, known or bound to name. And then it's printing out hello world, your name is Python person. I can now also go to a new cell down here. And then I can say, I can use reuse that function. There we go, same function. I can go upstairs again, modify the function Control enter to execute. I think also, there we go, run in place or just run. If I place run, it will run the cell and jump to the next cell. That's shift enter versus control enter, which is run in place. Let's just try shift enter. I go shift enter, it immediately jumps to the next cell and I can execute this one again. And you'll see that it's now used the new code because I went and redefined the function and then everything thereafter that I then uh, execute will reuse this new redefined function. Okay, so that was it for this uh, part one in this series of Python tutorials. Uh, what we did is we installed on Linux using the Anaconda installer we used Python. And we did that because now we have immediate access to the IPython notebook. And this is the thing that we're going to use in the future tutorials. Please, uh, if you save your notebooks, you can always uh, retrieve them again to continue in the next lessons. Thank you very much.